It is a privilege to have Joel with us. I first met him yesterday. Uh, he came highly recommended from one of our other friends, and we chatted a long time yesterday. It's an honor to have you, man. Just Thank go you. at it and do what you're going to do. Thank you. Um, thank you all for having me. Um, this is working, right? Yeah. All right, awesome. Um, the mic last night, I was always good. I was holding the mic out, so it wasn't as good. What we're going to talk about, one of those other things that people tend to shut down is when you start talking math and science. Everyone kind of goes, oh, man. Um, there's a reason our country doesn't rank even in the top 25 anymore. Um, what I deal with today is a lot of math, a lot of science, but don't worry. We're just going to keep it super high level. It's not hard. If you understand a number scale, you're going to be okay. If you understand on, off, you're going to be okay. And if you understand dollars, what's cheaper is better to get the same result, you're still going to be okay. Um, now, if you want to go into the ins and outs and whys, that's when it gets more complicated. When you start applying it to especially to biology, especially human biology, it becomes much more complicated because the human body is very complicated. Everyone will react to something differently, even from the same thing. This is going to be found everywhere, everywhere you go, in your homes, here, where I spoke last night, a hotel. I'll show you examples of that. It is everywhere. How you react to it, everyone will be different. Um, I don't know how you're going to react to it versus me react to it versus you. However, if you're having issues that you can't explain, um, some of the big ones, cancer, depression, diabetes, heart disease, there's papers linked to all of these um, with the things that I deal with. Um, and that's from the start of when we finally started using electricity back in the 1940s. Dr. Um, Samuel Milham wrote that paper. I believe I have it over there if someone would like to actually read it. Most of these papers are long, lots of research papers. Um, if we want to put the PowerPoint up, well, you, we can kind of start there. What, um, what I would like today, there's, if you ever think of like how many cars are crossing, how many people's crossing, how many people that you come in contact with and you wonder how you got there. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit how I got here today. There's a lot of important events when you go through your life that leads you to where you are, why you live in this part of the country, why you move from a different part of the country. And some of those you can look back on and be like, well, because I got a different job here, I got this, or this happened to me, or something good or bad happened. And you can kind of piece all that together. I'm going to go over why I'm here, because um, there were some big things that happened in my life. What my hope is, is that today, when you look back at today, hopefully it'll be a big thing in your life. Maybe you'll get some explanations to why some things are the way they are. Or maybe not today, maybe a few months from now, but I would like you to at least start being aware of what's going on around you. That's something that my dad always told me. That's what I would tell my kids. Be aware of what's going on around you, especially when you're trying to cross this road. That's the big thing. Just look. Um, you can see a lot of this stuff. What I explain it as, as everyone has ever bought a new car or a new truck, as soon as you buy that vehicle, you see that vehicle all over the place. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's everywhere. I'm not as unique. But before, I mean, those, they've always been there. So it's not like it's something new. All of this is, has been there. It is, and really, it is getting bigger and technically worse. It'll explain a lot of the other things. Um, when it works in combinations with many of the other problems that we have, you end up with bigger problems. Um, a lot of it we'll deal with is nervous system problems, skin problems, blood, because that's what it hits first. So uh, I guess with that, if you would like to go to the next slide, what I'm going to talk about a lot is my daughter, Kiana, at least for a little bit. That's a picture of her. Um, in December 4th and 5th, um, we noticed that she was having balance issues and having some other problems. So we took her into the doctor. On the 4th, they did an MRI, and they found a mass in her brain stem, is what they told us. At that time, we were hoping it was just maybe an infection, but when you start getting bad news, you're expecting it to be bad, and it is bad. It was diagnosed as diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma. It's called DIPG. It is a very f deadly form of brain cancer. It normally strikes people between the ages of seven and nine. Um, that, that was the first big event that happened. When you're given that news, and we were given to on a Friday morning, we were sitting with the head of neurology, sitting there with two residents who didn't say a word, 
Both of them had their heads down. Those are days you don't want to be doctors. Um, they explained to us in basic terms what's going to happen physiologically. Um, basically, it's going to cut off the brain fluid to be able to go through. And my wife is a nurse. My background's in physics, but I don't need a degree in biology to figure out that eventually that's going to kill her. So the million-dollar question is, is how long do we have, Doc? And so that morning was trying to figure out what to do. For those that have cancer, or if you look at what the cancer rates are now, I believe for males, it's almost one in two in your lifetime. Females, it's about one in three. If you get a diagnosis with that, people, at least that I've talked to, they're like, I want to do the right thing. Um, when you start getting bad news, it's not right and wrong anymore, in my opinion. It's hard. You have hard choices to make. Um, you don't get out of making them anymore. It's hard, and then you have harder. The next choices you have to make are going to be even harder. The longer it goes on, the harder the choices get, and it doesn't stop. Um, the choices we still have to make today because of that are still hard, but I know why I'm making them, and so that makes it a little bit easier. So the options that we got were we can go home and basically go on hospice right then and enjoy the time we have left as a family. Or you can try radiation that might actually prolong your life, but when it comes back, it's going to come back fast and she's going to be gone. Maybe six months, maybe nine months. What I learned later is that people with DIPG, um, most of them after diagnosis don't live more than a year. 9% will die within that year. We made it two months. We tried something different, though. We didn't do either of those options because, honestly, both those options suck. They, you have to go home and watch. Sit there, and that's, that's, not, that's not what I am. Um, we're fighters, and so we decided to fight, figure out something. When your kid is sick, the first thing you do is you find the best. Find the best doctor, you take them to them. At this point, money doesn't matter. You spend <laughs> whatever it takes. Um, and that's what we did. My brother, came, who was a chiropractor, came up with a plan. That plan was basically very simple. It was patented after, not really patented, but it followed a protocol of another gentleman that had advanced stage brain cancer who was able to get into remission. The plan is pretty simple. Figure out what went wrong, fix it. Seven-year-olds getting brain cancer is not normal. Kids getting cancer is not normal. Something went wrong. The question is what? What went wrong? Um, we lived a very healthy health style or lifestyle. My daughter never had any vaccinations. Um, we were in chiropractic care. She's been under chiropractic care since she was one. We walked everywhere. We ate organic. We ate healthy. Um, we did all kinds of exercise. We played outside. So what did I do wrong? What did we do wrong? Because if you look at everything you're supposed to be doing healthy, that shouldn't happen. I mean, that's just logical. And so our goal is to figure out what went wrong, because in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion, if you have cancer and you don't deal with the causes why you got it, whether you win or lose, it's going to come back. And eventually, it's going to win. That was our mindset going behind this. Our goal was to win. Yep. Um, and to do that, we need to figure out what went wrong. So to do that, we uh, flew to Spain. We saw an oncologist there named Dr. Raymond Halu. He was able to meet with us, and what he does is he uses blood analysis to kind of look at your blood, since your blood goes everywhere. Um, depending on what's going on in your blood, he can prescribe things to fix it. And so you have really good blood, you're going to be technically kind of healthy then, because that's going to bring health to the rest of your body. One of the next big things that happened was one of the things that she had issues with was electromagnetic fields. Um, I understood that with my background. It was kind of a, okay, electromagnetic field is on there. There was a, quite a few other things. And we had a plan and treatment, and then we started. And so that was kind of back in my mind. It really didn't give me the aha moment till about nine months later. And by then, it was much too late. If you'd like to go to the next slide. The picture you see there is of me and my daughter. That's also on my business card. That's. That's why I'm here. That's the first time she saw salt water. That was taken off the coast of Spain in the Mediterranean Ocean. It was one of those sunsets where just about every picture we took, 
was like a postcard. It was, it was very nice. She loved the water. She loved the sand. Loved all the stuff. That was one of the last really good times where she could walk. Um, unfortunately, even though we tried all the stuff we could, um, I guess I should, I should explain the Flutterbusters. So when we were in the hospital, and when I was talking about hard and harder, the next hard thing you have to do after you make a decision is trying to explain that to your daughter. Like, you're sick, honey. Like, really, really sick. And you have a brain tumor. I think I used brain tumor two or three times, where, and then I decided, me and my wife decided, we're not going to call it your brain tumor. We're going to give it a name. So we had my daughter name it. She named it Flutter. Um, I don't understand the reasoning behind that, but that's what she named it. And when we decided on our new treatment plan, um, everything became a flutter buster um, to try and kill flutter. That was the whole basis behind it. Um, anything was either gave flutter power or it was a flutter buster. We changed diet, we changed all kinds of stuff. A lot of that is documented through, um, we had like a caring bridge site, and we talked about all that, all the changes that we tried to make and do most of those that we continue to do. So Flutterbusters kind of became, uh, that's how we dealt with it. Um, when she was having balance issues or sickness issues, we just she would joke around saying Flutter's being a rock star up there. And of course, we'd play some air guitar, air drums, and we'd make the best of it. Um, my daughter died February 3rd, 2015. That was about two months. It wasn't all of the things that we understood were wrong with her, we continue to do. Because what's bad for one person is going to be bad for the next person. That's the whole mentality behind it. So a lot of the things that we knew with like Wi-Fi and some of the other stuff, we just changed because it was bad. We knew it was bad and we didn't want to have to do this again. So we made those changes. About six months later, my dad got diagnosed with cancer. It was stage four, advanced, and it had already spread. Um, he was kind of given the same options. Not a whole lot they can do for him. Once they find cancer and it's already spread, your hope doesn't look so good. You have slim and slimmer options. So what he tried and what we tried to do as well was, um, we're going to try it again. Because what, what really do you have to lose? So he started many of the same treatments my daughter did. Some of his was different because his cancer was different. He had... My dad worked as an electrician his whole life. He worked with electricity. He had heard of some of these things. Um, but he also has a massive cell phone tower up, up right across from the field. He was like, I wonder how much that has to do with it. So we called in a guy. That guy I eventually met with, and that's kind of where, that was kind of another big event in my life, where I started talking to him. From him, he started giving me books to read. Lots of books, lots of research papers, research papers after research paper. And what I found when those research papers was it was enlightening, it was disheartening, frustrating, and I guess all those emotions all into one because all of those papers that deal with electromagnetic fields give an explanation of why or how a seven-year-old can get brain cancer. It's all there. For those of you who'd like to read it, it's called the Puzzle Series. I keep it on my website. I have at least one paper to identify all these things, and the sad part is some of those papers are rather old. Most of this stuff has been known for a long time. And never is a point when this has been good. It has always been bad. However, when you have bad in small quantities, it's not as noticeable. When you get bad in large quantities, it becomes a lot more noticeable. It's just putting your finger on it. All of these things can be explained that way. Um, it's like putting together a puzzle. Um, when you ask which frequencies or which part of things are the worst, that's a hard one to answer. I don't have a good answer for that. It's like explaining if that chair there can hold 500 pounds and I put 1,000 pounds on it, that chair is going to break. But which of those 500 pounds was too much? Probably all of it. Your body can only hold so much. Everyone's going to be different. Um, for her, all of it together, wrong time, it was, it was too much. We didn't make it. Um, as I read, the more I read, the more I realized it's not just her, it's not just my dad, um, it's a lot of other people. It affects a lot of people. It will explain a lot of things. What we're going to go over today, um, I guess if you want to go to the next slide, 
most of the stuff that we're going to talk about is, um, this is the electromagnetic spectrum. If I can get my flashy little laser pointer out. Uh, does it even show up? Um, this is gamma ray x-ray. This is all cancer causing. No one doubts that. That's all really bad for you. You don't need a lot of exposure to that. It could cause really big problems. All the stuff that we're going to talk about today is in this range. Um, extremely low frequency is usually how it's referred to. Microwave, this is where a lot of your Wi-Fi, your phones, your Bluetooth, um, smart meters, that's where they're operating with. Dirty electricity. Radio is more down this. Your power cycle is about there. These you have a lot more exposure to, prolonged exposure over long periods of time. What our goal today is, is for simple ways to reduce those because um, this stuff is, like I said, is everywhere. If you'd like to go to the next slide, there are three big things I want you to take away from today. One is you are in control of your own environment. You choose what goes into your house, you choose the products you buy, you choose all of that. You have control of that. You can own that. You can fix a lot of this stuff. Um, there are some times you have to will spend money. I can show you ways where you don't have to spend any money. However, you're also going to have to give up a lot of things, power being one of them. Um, I don't necessarily uh, say that's a good one, but there's ways to live around it. There's cheaper ways to live around it. Um, Electromagnetic fields are everywhere. They're why I can use this cordless headset, um, why we have stuff popped up on the screen. We use them every day. Um, I'm not going to say not to use them because they provide a lot of benefit for us. What I'm usually advocating is using them smartly, using them when you need to, not overdoing it. That's the whole point. Um, when you use them smarter, hopefully you'll notice a difference. Everything we're going to talk about today is measurable. If you have the right equipment, you can measure everything. Most people don't buy this equipment because it is expensive, rather expensive. Um, you just kind of don't get into it just for, hey, I'm going to buy a $700 meter. No, most people will spend the $700 on something else. I'm the weirdo that buys a $700 meter. <laughs> um, I do that to show you numbers. Um, all of these devices, they don't have any political agenda. They don't have any other reasoning. All they do is measure what's there. That's what they are designed to do. These are all rooted in science and math. They will operate how they were designed to operate. They will measure what they were supposed to. If it's there, it'll show up. If it's not there, it doesn't show up. It's pretty simple. If you're looking for safe levels, the only safe level with a toxin is zero. There's a lot of things that we can make zero. Um, many things we cannot. You get as close as you can. You make it less bad. Um, the more less bad you make it, the better it off you are. If you can make it zero, great, but in a lot of cases, we're not going to be able to. A lot of it comes down to cost-effectiveness of making it zero. That's the bigger issue. Um, if you, everyone starts doing their part, that makes it a lot easier. But you can only control what's in, what's in your home. Start there first, because that's where you spend the most time. Then if you can control where you work, that would be the next part. You can't control everything. Um, there are a lot of places that I just don't go to now, because you can't, or I spend as little time as possible in. Um, if you would like to go to the next slide. The biggest thing, or the, what people are most exposed to now, is wireless. There's tons of wireless. There are, I guess, a quick question. How many would be okay if they decided to put a big cell tower in their backyard? How many are okay with that? How many of you have cell phones? It is simple supply and demand. If everyone wants it, they are going to build it. If they're going to make money on it, they're going to keep doing it. Um, 5G is what they're trying to roll out now. They are trying to get laws to where they can pretty much skip whatever zoning ordinances they want, and wherever it's most efficient to put a tower, that's where it's going up. Um, if you look at your family and how many cell phones do you need, do you need a cell phone for each person? These are questions to ask. The more money you give them, they're going to try and make more money. That's, that's why they're in business. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Um, 
if everyone would try to take out their cell phones, this will probably be one of your biggest ways to reduce your own exposure. Not many talks you're actually going to be asked to take out your cell phone. Is there anyone that doesn't have a cell phone? That's a great place for it. <laughs> awesome. If you want to grab it, um, that's great. And we can kind of go over some of the other stuff while you're getting that. Um, have your phones on the ready because one thing you should not do for females, never put this in your bra. Never put it anywhere by your chest. And while you're talking about bras, take the metal underwire out of them. Metal is an antenna. It is a conduit. That's why we use it for wiring. Um, replace it with plastic. It's pretty simple. Um, if you're looking at all the wireless Wi-Fi, it's going to seep in right there, right on the underbra, because it's looking to go from high potential, low potential, and it'll take the easiest path to get there. Um, it's a pretty simple thing. When we were in Spain, they were, it was like a euro or two to actually switch this out, and I think we did it there. If you go and buy a bra or sports bra, make sure there's plastic, not metal in it. It's a real simple thing. When you're starting to buy new stuff, that's a simple way to reduce it. Um, smart meters are rolling out. Smart meters, there are varying degrees of smart meters. There are some smart meters that will blast a signal every 20 seconds. Um, very disruptive, 24 hours a day. Boom, boom, boom. Um, these can be located at the, wherever your power is coming in, and if that's right next to a bedroom, that can disrupt your sleeping. Um, an easy way to figure out if you have a smart meter is with one of the meters I have, and it'll tell you exactly how much you have. Um, or you can try and call the power company. If you have one of the analog disk one, you're still okay. Um, that's the easiest way to tell. If you have a digital one, maybe. Um, I have a smart meter in my home. I don't have it shielded. I don't worry about it because it only sends a blast once every three months. Limited exposure. You want to try and find the things that you have the most exposure to because that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. If your smart meter is blasting every 20 seconds, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that's something to take care of because that's a lot of exposure. It accumulates up over time. Wi-Fi is not good for you. Um, the best way to do it is to work towards having something hardwired. Hardwired is faster. It is more secure, and from a health standpoint, it is way better. Um, Wi-Fi has always been slower. It'll always be slower. It's just the way it is. If you want really fast, if you talk to like gamers, Everything is wired. It is not wireless. Um, the reason a lot of people do Wi-Fi is because it's easier. It's not good for you. Um, there's no reason to have a Wi-Fi router on all the time. As long as we're talking about Wi-Fi routers, um, places Wi-Fi routers should not be located in your bedroom, number one, under a bedroom, number two. Um, and while we're talking about that, if you have your Wi-Fi on at night, I ask you, what are you doing in the middle of the night that you need Wi-Fi on? You don't. Um, shut it off at night if you have it. If you're not going to be able to move towards a wired connection, that is the easiest thing to do. If you don't want to unplug it and plug it in all the time, find a, like a $10 timer. Um, they sell them at Menards. You plug it in, it'll kick off at 10 o'clock, kick back on at 8. You don't even have to do anything. You forget about it. It'll turn on, turn off, you'll see how you sleep. Or you can start unplugging it. That's free. Work towards a wired Bluetooth is a whole, not a whole lot better. It's just using a different frequency. Um, everyone's got their phones. I'd like you to take them out. The biggest thing that you can start doing is putting your phone in airplane mode. Also, turning off your Bluetooth connectivity and your wireless. This will basically make your phone off. If you leave your phone on, it is going to be sending a signal to see where you are and what tower is closest, always trying to get you the best reception. If that is in your pocket, that is blasting wherever it is in your pocket. Back pocket, bra, front pocket. When you look at reproductive rates and studies that deal with reproductive rates, you'll see a massive decline. One such study is they put mice next to an antenna park, and after five generations of the mice, they went sterile. That one was in 97. Um, if you're looking at people that are having fertility issues, this could be an explanation for that. Um, Simple things, turning your phone in airplane mode. Most of you, that is going to be your biggest exposure because everyone has a phone. Now, in airplane mode, you are not going to receive phone calls. You are not going to receive texts. All you have to do is kick it off of airplane mode to get all that stuff. Everything's going to download. 
Once it's downloaded, you can turn it back off. You can respond to every text, every email, however you want to work. You un put it back on. It sends all the data out. Give it a couple of minutes, and you can turn it back off. If you are waiting for a phone call or you know something's happening in your family, obviously leave it on. I mean, that's not too hard. But if you don't need it on, shut it off. If you're going to carry it on your person, the best thing to do is have it in airplane mode. This is my wife's phone. We have one phone for our family, and she usually insists that when I travel, I take it. Um, if you, here's my meter. My phone's been in airplane mode for a while. Now, I'm going to turn the volume down. For those that were at the thing last night, I had the music rather loud on Pandora. Um, there are ways to shield. Um, for many of you, and there's lots of devices out there, you'll see one on mine. It's called a Q-Link. Um, these do not work like necessarily they want. If you put something on your phone that is supposed to reduce electromagnetic fields, the one that you want to reduce is the signal going from this to the tower. How do you check that? It's pretty easy. Does the phone still work? If the phone still works, it's really not blocking that signal. That's pretty simple. On, off. How do you do that? In order to shield something, think of it as a cube. You have to shield all six sides. The more that you shield, if you only shield one side, it's like a light bulb. If I put my hand over a light just on top, it'll be dark up here. Here, all the way around, there's light. Same thing with an uh, antenna. The difference is you can't see it, but you can measure it. So if I take my meter, sorry, a little absent-minded, um, and some of this is going to be I just wanted to check this since this is all wireless too. See how much it is. So that's not terrible. Um, um, you have bad and then less bad. So <laughs> if I can avoid it, I do. But for here, it makes sense to do it. So that's why we do it. Um, right now, the meter is reading 7580. And then as soon as I take it out, And if you want later on, you want to test your phone, by all means, come on up. Uh, there we go. So that's basically pegging the meter. Now, if you think of pegging the meter, if you look at your tack on your car and you have an RPM gauge at about seven, eight grand, um, it's red. It's redlining. Think of that as like redlining because that's what it does, trying to send out all the signals. When that's in your pocket, this is a little worse because I've had it off for eight or nine hours. It's trying to figure out if there's any text or anything else. The sound you hear is what your body feels all the time. The closer you are, the more intense it is. It's kind of distance. This is why you shouldn't have Wi-Fi routers in your same room or under a room, because they travel through walls. This is going to keep on happening for a while. And once it actually settles down, we'll, we'll show you how to shield it really cheaply. This will also, once you know how to shield one of these devices, you can shield anything that operates the same way. Because once, in science, if you know certain laws, it has to follow those certain laws. These are our science math-based. So if you can shield it or block it, it's going to work on other devices too, as long as you do it properly. So for certain smart meters, especially ones that are around uh, municipalities and their water, this is the way I shield them, because it's the cheapest. Um, there are a lot of things out there that you can buy to shield stuff. A lot of them are expensive. While that's still doing, um, cell towers, FM transmission towers. If um, After today on my website, it's flutterbusters.com. On the side, you'll see something that says workshops. There will be a handout there. You have to click on it, download it. It will go over a lot of things that we talked about today. And it will also give you um, suggestions of places to go. One of those places to go is to see how many cell phone towers are in your area. If you're thinking of buying a new home, I would check this out. See how many cell phone towers are in that area, FM transmission towers in that area. We have them located very close to where we were. This was an issue with our house. All of these things that um, we found in research, I found, I found where Kiana was. 
Um, and that's it's, it's sad and disheartening at the same time because one, I didn't know, and then two, I wish I could have fixed it sooner. We fixed it now because I, I still have a son and we're trying to make sure that bad things don't happen to him. And once you know better, you can do better. That's, that's the best you can do. Um, there are sites, all these are free. You don't have to punch in any number. You just punch in your address. It'll show you how many were within that. That guy keeps on going. Um, Fitbits, um, these aren't good for you. You can save 100 bucks just by not buying them. Yeah. Or 250 bucks if you buy the nice one. Don't buy those. Um, what they do is you have it right next to your body the whole time and it's constantly emitting a signal. If you are trying to see if you sleep better, having that on is not a good idea. Um, what it does, and if you look at some of the research where it goes with sleep patterns, it'll affect and can affect your melatonin production, which is kind of like your free radical. So it also increases a whole mess of other things. It fights what your body normally uses to make itself better, and it makes more of the bad. Take it off, or just don't buy it. If you can still return it, see if you can get your money back. Um, those are always going to be bad. Bluetooth, if you have a Bluetooth headset, those are bad as well. Um, use it as limiting as possible. Um, wired headsets, if you're going to talk on your phone, the best thing to do is put a headset, um, air tubes or wireless is going to, or like a wired, and then don't have your phone in your pocket, just set it off somewhere else, just a little ways away. Um, or go back to using a corded phone. Deck phones are cordless phones that will constantly emit a signal. Um, a lot of people keep these right next to their beds, that's why they're a big problem. So a big signal the whole time, even when the phone's not in use. How do you tell? You need a meter to tell that. Um, the other way around it is you can buy a corded version. Corded version costs, when I had to replace mine, was 10 bucks. They're pretty cheap. Anything corded normally is going to be cheaper wh than what it is wireless. Why? It's because everyone wants the wireless. Once everyone starts buying the wire, they're going to jack the price up on that. It's kind of supply and demand. Most people have this at home, just regular aluminum foil. Uh, what I'm going to do is find Pandora and hopefully under a minute. And then we will get some music going. And what's going to happen is it's going to play through one song and then it's going to die. Be and then my battery's probably going to die. When you get into low areas um, where you don't have good cell reception, does anyone notice that your battery dies a lot faster? Yeah. Do you know why that is? Yeah. Right. So when you put your phone in metal cases or you were in low areas, if you're in your car, which is normally metal, um, for the most part, if you're in an elevator or a building with steel siding or a building with thicker walls, what happens is, is your phones are designed when it's a weak signal, it boosts power. In order to boost power, you burn more battery, which means that signal is stronger. If you're carrying it into your pocket, you are getting a stronger signal wherever you have that in your pocket or on your person. Um, that's just the way they're designed to work. Um, that's why if you have it in airplane mode, it doesn't matter. Um, it makes it a lot easier. And it seems that I'm failing to find it in under a minute. Oh, there we go. So what's going to happen is that's going to go off. This is the cheapest way to deal with them. If it'll actually find it. I am in the middle of the building, so maybe it won't actually pick it up. Um... So we're getting, we can do it this way, so it's still sending one. All you have to do is wrap it. Now, notice all six sides are going to be wrapped. Um, the beauty of using aluminum foil, when you see people walking around in aluminum foil hats, this is why, because it will block a signal. And two, it's cheap. Um, if you block your meter and the power company has issues with it, you can rip it off and attach a new one for a couple of pennies. Um, that's the easy part. Depending on what kind of um, meter you have, I know some people that actually have built cages around them, they come out, they open up the cage, and then they close it again, take their reading. Um, we're not going to hear that guy for a while. 
that's the easiest way to do it. Now, most of you aren't going to wrap your cell phones in tin foil because it makes them pretty hard to use. Um, if you want some strange looks, you can go ahead and do it. Like, here, try and use my phone. <laughs> Unwrap it. But uh, for general purposes, that's how you can deal with wireless signals. It's an easy way to block them. That's probably the cheapest, too. Um, well, it's not as cheap as just turning it off. Off is still cheaper. If you're wondering how this affects kids, um, everything that we're going to talk about will affect kids more. Why? Because everyone has a certain resistance. Um, kids have less of a resistance um, because their bodies are smaller, their cells actually replicate a lot faster, and so they have, will have more issues with this. If you look at some of the problems we're having, kids have certain issues that necessarily we didn't have 20, 30 years ago. Um, if you're wondering how this affects them, the easiest way to do it is to measure because you can measure everything. If you're wondering what this role or how much of a role this plays in your life, measure it. If you don't want to buy the equipment, and for the most part I suggest not buying it because it's expensive, you can rent it. I rent it from, you can rent it from me, or normally I service it two, two hours from where I drive, so it's only four hours for me to drive back and forth. I'll come and measure it for you. That's kind of what I do now. Um, it's pretty easy to measure stuff. It's just having the right equipment. Most of this stuff is expensive. The only thing I don't rent out is my scope because to rent out my scope, it's cheaper for me to just come here. That's really expensive. Um, if you would like to go to the next slide, as we were talking about more how it affects kids, if you look at, this is cell phone radiation going into a brain. Um, teenagers, even though um, they may be thick-headed at times, their head is actually not thick. It is thin. You're not done growing until about your mid-20s. That's when your bones are all done. The younger you are, the deeper the penetration goes. So the younger you have, that's what happens. Um, you can figure out how good that is for your kids. If kids have phones, airplane mode. That's the big one. If you're looking at playing games, a lot of people play games on phones. I play lots of games. My son plays games. I have a 12-year-old boy. Um, the way we get around this is he has a laptop, everything is wired, we downloaded an app, um, ours is called Bluestacks, where all of those games he can play on the computer. On a wired connection, he plays them more than he should. Um, that's how that works. You can do, I'm sure Apple has the same kind of programs, it's just a matter of what devices you had. We started with Droid, that's why we're using Bluestacks, is because it's kind of Droid based. That's free. You can download it. You have to download some apps every now and then where they get like a hundredth of a penny. But um, that's a way of getting around that. If they have phones, um, airplane mode as much as possible, as much as you can. I understand the need for them to have a phone, but they don't need a phone on all the time. If you're worried about where they are, um, there's only so much you can do from a distance anyways. You know. The next thing we're going to talk about, um, next slide, is dirty electricity. Dirty electricity is primarily caused by um, nonlinear loads. You have linear loads, nonlinear loads. Back in the 70s, it was linear loads, which means voltage and current are used proportionally. Everything matches up real nice. We use pulse, um, kind of little blips. All of your electronics, your computers, um, anything that's like green tech, it's going to use a pulse because it uses less energy, less amps. Um, and using less amps, they can power more things. We use a lot of power today. A lot of the things that we have today are caused by that. This explains why a lot of it's in everyone's home. So all of your home surround, your TV, your computers, all of this will produce something at a certain level. Um, my scope up there, if I plug it into the battery, it will produce it at a certain level. The scope is really expensive. Um, that scope is five grand. You can go on Amazon and buy it today if you'd like. In the power pack, they don't account for all the harmonics that is created to charge that battery. And to fix that would be a couple of dollars. For the price that you have to pay for that, you'd think that maybe they would make that adaptation or put that in there. This is an engineering problem. Um, that's the best way to explain it. The way to fix an engineering problem is with better engineering. That's the best way to fix it. Until they actually do that, the other way is with filters. And I'm going to explain and show some other big things. 
The biggest thing you can do for your dirty electricity at home is light bulbs. And I'm going to show you that. Um, this is the scope that I told you about. You can take this out. As I kind of explain what's going on here. What, what we have here is, for those that can see, you have a red cycle, which is a 60 hertz sine wave. That's what powers everything. There is a blue line up there for those that can't see or would like to see after the show. It'll still be up there, and you can play with it, um, see things. The more blue you see, the worse it is. So you're going to see a big line, and then the slides that are coming up, the more you see, the worse it is. Those are going to be higher frequencies. So this is what this place is. It's kind of like a fingerprint. Every place is going to be a little bit different. There are a lot of common things that go over the top of it. And so there are certain light bulbs, especially green light bulbs, as we can see. The bigger peaks you see, the worse it is. The smaller, the better. In an ideal world, that blue line would be flat. Um, there's only one real way to make that flat, and that's to do this. Um, we unplug everything. That's how you make it flat. But then you have no power. So that's the trade-off. Now, the other big thing that you can do is choosing right light bulbs. Um, if you're wondering which light bulbs to buy and you don't want to measure anything, the incandescent kind. Um, ones with the filament, halogen, those are all good bulbs. You don't need to know a certain brand. You don't need any type of wattage is going to be fine. It's how they're made, how they use power. That's what the issue is. Now, if you get into CFLs, I never, ever recommend a CFL. If you have those in your home, hopefully by the end of the day, you will get rid of them. You will throw them away, however you deem is a CFL. This is a CFL. Uh, curly Q. Curly, curly Q bulbs. Um, they cause a lot of issues. One of them, even if they don't produce dirty electricity, I will show you other things that they do cause that are equally as bad. Two, they will leach mercury. Um, mercury was found in my daughter's bloodstream. It was until I listened to like a certain podcast on this that I realized that's probably where they came from. Why? Because I had these bulbs all through my house. I was trying to do good. I was trying to be green. I was trying to you know, help the environment, all that good stuff. And it was counterproductive. Um, she not only had it, we had all of our blood tested. We all had it because we all live in the same place. Now, if you're wondering which bulbs to buy, this is a CFL. Now, as you see, do you see all the extra blue? That's all high frequency going back on your lines. That's bad. The darker the blue, the bigger the wave, the worse it is. Um, if I shut the bulb off, it goes away. On here off. Now, right now, what this does, what this meter does, is it puts all that you see on that scope into a number you can actually understand. Right now, it's at 48. You want that number as low as possible. When I kick that bulb on, we jump up to 180, 187. That's bad. You don't want to really be over anything over 50. Now, this is just one bulb. When you have a household full of these bulbs, that's what causes issues. Now, there are two ways to fix it. One is you can plug in a filter, which is the engineering fix. And some of it goes away. So now we're down to 38, 36 with the bulb on. And you see a bunch of the blue go away. Now, if I unplug it, you get more of it. Now, here's an LED bulb. Some LEDs are good, some are bad. That one's bad. Um, in order to figure out which LEDs are good and bad, you've got to test them. I've got to test every single one of them. Um, you need a meter to do that. If I turn them both on, we get more. If I plug in a filter, it gets less. That's how the filters work. They short out the high frequency. Now, you can buy a $30 filter to fix a $6 light bulb, or you can just buy a different $6 light bulb because that's cheaper. That's the better way to go. If you know where the problem is, fix the problem where it's at. Saves you time, saves you money. Now, most of your other electronics that you have in your house, you're going to need a certain amount of filters for. Um, if I turn these off, it all goes back. The other big thing is dimmer switches. If you watch up there, this is kind of fun. Dimmer switches aren't good. If we watch it dance, because it regulates the voltage at different levels. 
And so it'll move back and forth the whole time. Um, those aren't good. Dimmer switches are normally like two or three times more expensive than a regular switch. Just use a regular switch. That's the easiest way to get around it. If you're looking for, there are some LEDs that are good. Um, like this one, if I turn this guy on. Right now I'm at 45. The way you test the light bulb is this number is running 45-ish. If I turn it on, there's going to be a gap or a, um, uh, a way to, you'll see the number jump. That's the arc making the connection. We're at 45 there when it's on. If I turn it off, we're still at 45. If that number doesn't go up and stay up, you have a good light bulb. If it goes up, or sorry, if it goes up and stays up, that's bad. If it goes up, comes back down to where you were at, good light bulb. Same thing will happen if I use a regular, just a regular light bulb. You won't see any blue show up on the screen either. Two different ways of measuring the same thing. Both of them happen the same way. Light bulbs are big, everyone has them in their house. It's the easiest thing to do is to switch those. Um, we can get into jokes of how many people it's going to take, but hopefully it's only one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that's the biggest part. Most homes are going to take anywhere from about 20 filters. Um, that depends on your size of your home and what you have in it. It is what you have in your home that makes the difference. In my home, I have about 26, 27. Um, why? Because I have a lot of electronics. Um, I like the, we have like the home theater, we have big TVs, we have all of that stuff. I still use it, but I, but I use a filter. It's kind of like if you're going to buy a cycle, a motorcycle, you're going to buy a helmet for it because that makes it safer. Um, you don't have to wear the helmet, but it's usually recommended. Um, same thing with you start buying electronics. The scope will jump it. My laptop jumps it up to about 140. When I have those on, I plug them in. Um, pretty simple. You plug them in, you leave them. In this building, to get the waveform it is, there are 19 plugged in. You'll see them kind of all the way around. As soon as I unplug all of those, everything's going to go back to what it was, and that'll be a bunch of high frequency. A lot of them are caused by the CFLs that are in the, in the room. That is the big part. This is all like a, like I said, like a fingerprint. So each home's going to be a little bit different. Easy to measure if you have the right stuff. If we go to the next slide, this is what my home looked like um, when I first started. All the areas that you see, like the dark areas, that's high frequency. That frequency is about 42 kilohertz. Filters filter out frequencies between 4K and 100K. Those are biologically active frequencies. That's what research papers are written on. Um, I have a bunch of those. There's also links to those papers on my website. Feel free to read them. Um, in my daughter's bedroom, it was 300-ish. Um, she had the highest room in the house. Um, a lot of it comes down to how things are wired in your house. Now, if we go to the next slide, that's what it looks like now with filters in. Notice it's not flat, however, it's considerably better. There's no more high areas of high frequency and it's all, all decent. That's a lot better. Those readings now in my home is like 10, 15 when I plug into an outlet. That's considerably better. If we go to the next slide, other areas that she spent lots of time, that's her school. That's the classroom she was in when she was diagnosed. That's what 2000 looks like. Wow. That's as high as my meter will go. That's bad. That's 62.5 kilohertz. Um, remember that number. Don't worry, you don't have to remember it very long because it's going to show up again. This is everywhere. They chose not to fix that. That was one of the other big things why I ended up where I am today. I used to work at the school. I started measuring the school, and the school was 2,000 all over the place. I'm no longer at the school. My son's no longer at the school. If we go to the next slide... It's not just her school, it is other schools as well. The school that this one was taken from was in Minnesota. The teacher in that school died of brain tumors. The teacher next door died of leukemia, blood and nervous system. This is 25 kilohertz. This isn't just here, this is everywhere. Um, you can measure everything. Um, if we'd go, like to go to the next slide, 
This is my brother's office. He's the one that traveled with us to Spain. This is also 62.5 kilohertz, same frequency. Um, what they have in common? Computers, lots of tech, printers. Um, your office buildings are normally going to be worse because you have a lot more electronics there, big office buildings. Now, the difference with, between this and the school is if we go to the next slide, we plugged in filters. That's what it looks like now. So he goes from like 2,000 to like 10. Now, on the next slide, this is the hotel room right, that I was staying at over the weekend. This is 16 to 20 kilohertz that are riding on the lines. Six filters later, on the next slide, that's what it looks like. The, this is easy to fix. I mean, you plug in a filter. You don't need any electrician to do it. Plug it in, measure, plug, and go. And then you just leave them in. As long as they're in, they're working. How long are they going to work? They should last a lifetime, as long as you're not throwing them, breaking them, or something like that. Um, until they actually start making things like they should. Until they start engineering better products, then you don't need an engineering fix for it. That's the big thing. Um, if we'd like to go to the next slide, contact current. If you ever talk to a farmer, they're going to talk to you about contact current, ground current. We're talking about the same thing. This is stuff that's traveling through ground. Primarily, this is caused by um, the primary neutral coming back isn't big enough to hold it. Now, what happens with all of the dirty electricity is it adds impedance onto the line. It makes it harder for that electricity to travel through. So instead of coming back on a neutral, it comes back on ground. So by fixing one, you can help fix the other. Now, what am I talking about with ground, like contact current? The other way to measure this is pretty easy. It's with a voltmeter and EKG patch. And I can show you a lot of places that some homes are generally over 18. It kind of depends on where you are. Depends on a lot of things like if you have copper piping, all copper piping, because it can travel a lot easier through that. And the best way to do it is to measure it. So we're going to use that CFL bulb as an example. And I'm going to try not to knock a whole lot of things off. And I didn't hook that up yet. So all this wire is, is I'm hooked into ground. And that's a cluster. Brendan, would you be able to come up for a second? What I'm going to have you do is just read the number on that. Okay. Um, this is the other reason CFL bulbs are bad. Actually, let's do this on this one. At this point, it's zero. And so as soon as I pop that guy on, now what are we at? Uh, between 9 and 10. No? 49, 52, 50, 51. So what happens is why this is becoming a lot higher is because these emit a frequency. That frequency then generates current within your body. Above 18 microamps, is that's what this is being measured in. That's where biological process relevant to cancer start. Those so when this number gets above 18... That's when things relevant to cancer start happening. Those are in papers. That paper, okay. I believe, I have with me, and you can download. So literally the electromagnetic is flowing through your body. Comes through you, and then... Yeah. So the higher it is, the worse it is. Um, the closer you are to these bulbs, the higher it's going to be. So when you put them in your lamps, your desk lamps, all over your house, that's when bad things happen. Um, this will happen not only with CFLs, but regular fluorescent bulbs. It depends on how strong they are. This one is particularly strong because it's a full spectrum one. Um, some of the other ones, like these, aren't necessarily as powerful. But other things that you touch, if you have a... Now it's back to zero. Now it's zero again. So this will happen every single time. Um, as soon as I touch it, turn it on, off, you switch one thing. And if you get a response, then you know where it's coming from. Um, it's not magic. It's just the way you measure it. The other thing, another little easy tidbit, how many of you work on laptops? Um, is the laptop metal? 
If you have a metal case, the best thing to do or a good habit to get into is start working your laptops on battery mode. Because when you hook them in, a lot of times what they'll do is they're going to ground it to the, the case. When they ground it to the case, that also ups your contact current. Um, I've seen it between 40 and 100, and all you have to do is unplug it, work it on battery mode. Battery dies, that's a good time to take a break. Plug it back in, let it charge back up. A lot of simple things. Um, other things that this will happen to, um, touching a sink, touching your metal refrigerator because they ground it to the, basically the frame. Um, a lot of your refrigerators are energy efficient. Um, energy efficiency normally means that they're tying a neutral to a ground and then you're having excess current there. Engineering problem. Um, if we go to the next one, that is a lot of times, like especially if I do a full home inspection, we'll do a sink to ground reading. The way I took this was I took an EKG patch, I put it on the floor, and then I took my scope and I put it into the sink drain. That's what's flowing through my house. Well, at that time, at that date. It was in December, it was super cold, like 20, 30 below, and so it's gonna be worse. Your contact current changes based on what the demand is on the grid. So, like today is gonna be a nice day. A lot of people's air conditioning is not gonna be running, nor are you gonna be running furnaces. It's probably gonna be a little bit lower. Um, when you get really cold days or really hot days, it's gonna jack it up. Um, this was a really cold day. All of the squiggly lines that you see, um, that is high frequency riding on that. So all of the energy efficiency stuff, and that likes to travel right on top of the ground. Um, the wave, that's a 60 hertz sine wave. Where's that coming from? That's the power. That's gonna be in just about everyone's home. It's just a matter of how much. Um, in your basement, it's probably gonna be a little bit more because it's closer to the ground. But the way you get around it or you figure out where you are is you measure it. More importantly, measure how much is coming through you. Um, that's kind of the big number. And then you can take steps based on that. Now, if we go to the next slide, the biggest thing that we have here, when you talk EMFs, most people are going to realize that as magnetic fields. That's the first thing they think about. They don't think necessarily of all the other things that we just talked about. Magnetic fields are very hard to shield. Well, they're not necessarily hard to shield. They're expensive to shield. The best way to deal with a magnetic field is moving stuff. It's all about distance. Same thing kind of with your phone. The closer you are, the bigger the field is going to be. Um, magnetic fields are based in science. The more currents you have flowing through something, the bigger field you're going to have. So like your things like electric blankets, they suck a lot of juice. Don't use those. Um, the other things, anytime you have a motor, that's going to have an electric field. It's all about how much exposure you have. So like beds, like the electrical beds, if you have one of those um, and you're sleeping, unplug it before you go to bed. There'll be a magnetic field associated with that. Um, usually, depending on how close you are to the motor, will depend on how big it is. That is the big thing. Um, the little things here, this is one of the cheaper Gauss meters. Um, this might be a little bit hard to see, but one of the big things that, is that guy on? I gotta, just gotta plug it in. So for those that can't see, this is a needle and this is reading from zero to 100. If I move it closer to that alarm clock, it basically pegs it out. If your alarm clock is right next to your head, that means you're sleeping in a magnetic field. The best way to do it is to move away from it. Move your clock away from your bed, like three feet, four feet. Simplest thing you can do. Um, we had clocks, oh, the other big thing that most people don't realize is small little fans. Um, small little fans have those about six feet. Those can produce a really big field. Um, we had a small little fan right next to my daughter's bed. Slept every night for white noise, so they sleep better. All these little things start to add up. Um, simple to solve. You just move it. Um, electric toothbrushes. Um, this happens a lot with the other stuff. It'll peg it. If I move it, it's all distance. Now, to use this safely or at a lower distance, you got to use it like that. <laughs> that makes it hard. Um, the easiest way around that is using a regular old toothbrush. There's a lot of things, and it's a lot cheaper. I mean, these are 100 bucks. When I showed my wife that, she was, she was angry. 
she walked away, stamped it, and like, I'm not giving up my toothbrush. <laughs> and then finally, like a couple days later, she's like, I'll try the regular brush. Um, she was having like a lot of problems with like decay and stuff with her teeth, and it's, it's one of those little things that adds up. Um, obviously, if you're just brushing like once a day or twice a day, um, maybe not a big a deal. It's something easy to switch, though. They give, if you go to the dentist, they're going to give you a regular toothbrush. Just try it. Um, a lot of these things, it's just you a matter of trying. Blow dryers, that's another one. Um, I realize it's mainly ladies that this will affect. Um, this amazingly came out the way I woke up this morning. I didn't have to do a lot to it. Yeah. I got good volume today. That's the way I feel. So... Um, Curling irons are kind of another one. They'll be hit or miss because they're using a lot of... Anytime you take electricity and you try and change it into heat, you need a lot of current. More current, bigger the field. Space heaters is another big one. If you're putting space heaters right next to your feet, those are big fields that you're in. Um, move back a little bit. That's all you have to do. Or set it away just a few feet. Little things add up to make a big difference. Um, that's... That's the best way. If you're only going to clean up one area in your room, clean up your bedroom. You're going to spend about six to eight hours there laying there, probably in the same position, hopefully sleeping good. Clean that up first. Um, don't have your phone next to you. If your phone's in airplane mode with all the stuff shut off, your alarm clock will still work. If you're using it for alarm clock, put it on the bed stand, you're fine. Clean your bedroom up. Look to see where things are in your house, where your meters are, where the electrical service panel is. Um, magnetic fields around an electrical service panel are going to be higher. The reason that your, like most places that are all using power aren't super high to start with is because when you're using AC power, most of those fields are going to cancel out because you have an opposing wave coming one way and just the opposite coming the other way. And as long as they're close together, which most of the wires are, you have very small fields. When you start pulling them apart at a service panel, you have your hot going one way, and the other one going the other way. When they separate out, you get bigger fields. So a service panel like right next to a kid's bedroom, underneath a kid's bedroom, um, that's something to have measured so you at least don't put the bed right over the top of it. That's the big thing. Know where things are, know where things are located, know where the power's coming in at. Um, just little things to be aware. If you're building a house, take that into consideration. Um, if you're looking at building a house, also look to where all those towers are. Because once you build it, you can't move the towers. Um, moving your house is very hard. Um, building next to substations. Um, if you ask a realtor how easy it is to sell a house next to a substation, it's hard. And it's hard for a reason. Um, same with big power lines. If you're worried about power lines, um, good rule of thumb is the bigger the pole, farther away you want to be. Sometimes you can do that, sometimes you can't. Um, especially when they start bringing in new power for all this new stuff. They put power lines up where they need them. People want power. Um, if we go to the next slide, um, the big question is, is what do you do? Um, we flew through a lot of stuff. Um, and honestly, there is a lot more stuff that goes with this. We only kind of skimmed a lot of the high points. Um, what I would like you to do, or what no is, stop, think, and look what's going on around you. Figure out what is your highest exposures. Um, for the people that like to cheat, I'm going to tell you those. It's probably going to be your Wi-Fi, it's going to be your phone, and it's going to be your dirty electricity. Now, is it in that order? Maybe not necessarily. It depends what, how you measure it, what your levels are. So some, some people might have a bigger issue with dirty electricity. Other people have a bigger issue with Wi-Fi, some of the other stuff. It is how much you're being exposed, how close you are. If everyone has a phone, that's probably where the biggest one's coming from. Start there. All those things like that you can shut off your phone, those are, those are free. Um, they don't cost any money. You just have to do them. Um, I can't, can't make it any easier. I mean, you can try and buy a $100 thing. If you're looking at devices that actually um, are supposed to block EMF, um, the EMFs that you're going to want to be blocking are... Wi-Fi signals, the microwave frequencies. The way to test that, easy way to test that, since everyone has a phone, is with your phone. Wrap the device in a phone, and if you can still call it, it's not good. It's pretty simple. Um, there's shielding clothing that's available. That's the best way to test it um, without buying like a nice meter, expensive meter. Just use your phone. 
Um, you can also notice what the bars are. So if you can actually enclose yourself and watch bars, if bars drop when you wrap it in something, um, my phone, the bars are going to be dropped. By the time I unravel it, the battery's going to be dead because the phone's old and the battery's getting old, but it's been trying to find a signal this whole time. So that is another easy way to do it. Um, very kind of, yes, pass, fail. There's not, not a whole lot in between there. Um, I think that fairly much for the most part wraps it up. I'm not sure how I'm doing on time. You're doing we, good. Okay. Um, if we go to the next slide, there's a lot of studies out there, lots of studies. Um, in science, if you look at um, the, the biggest thing, if you can break a law in science, you're going to get a Nobel Prize for it, especially if you can show how you broke it. That's the big thing. In Things are either safe or they're not safe, and if they're not safe, you're going to find a whole mess of things showing that they're not safe. There is lots of research to show a lot of this stuff is not safe. Um, there's a lot of politics that goes in it, and even worse, there's a lot of money that goes into it. Um, if you look at some of the companies that are making the most money, a lot of them is telecom. Um, and they're fighting to keep, is trying to keep making money. Now, I'm not saying what happened to my family is going to happen to your family. Um, but not doing anything, yeah. you have to do something, yeah. in my opinion. And you can start with small stuff. These are easy things to fix. Um, for the most part, everything I showed you, you, you don't have to spend any money. You just have to do it. You just have to start trying. If you're having certain issues or just don't feel right and no one's ever given you an explanation of why you don't feel right, you're not meant to feel bad all the time. If you're feeling bad all the time, um, depression's a big one that'll affect it. Notice where you are. Notice what they have, how much Wi-Fi it is. Um, you can buy a small meter to measure where they're at. You can find levels because this stuff is everywhere. The other study is the big one coming out that you'll probably hear a little bit more of is the National Toxicology Program linking brain cancer with cell phone use. Now, the big thing to remember, too, is when they start talking about cell phones and brain cancer, know that these frequencies are the same as or very similar to what your Wi-Fi is. Um, they're kind of all linked together. So once you understand one, you're going to understand the next. None of it is good for you. And people are going to respond to different ways, to different things. You may not get cancer. If you look at smoking, for example, smoking is what most people will agree will cause lung cancer. Um, it will also cause heart problems. It'll cause a whole mess of other higher blood pressure and a whole list of other problems. It's not just lung cancer. Does it do it to everyone? No. I have a grandmother who has smoked for 70 years. 70. She lived with a three-day a pack smoker for more than 50 years. Um, she outlived two of her sons. One was a smoker, one was not a smoker. She has no lung cancer. She responds differently. Now, is she like the epitome of health? <laughs> no, no, she is not. <laughs> However, she is still alive at, I believe she turns 88. Wow. <laughs> right. And so, it affects everyone differently, but it doesn't make you necessarily healthy. Right. I mean, she's on oxygen. She has like COPD and some of the other stuff too, but no lung cancer. Um, there's a bunch of dirty electricity linked to cancer, especially like in schools. Um, the one I showed you, especially at her school, really surprisingly bad. That's common in a lot of schools. It's whether or not they want to take the steps to fix them. One's dealing with light bulbs, and then two is dealing with the electronics. Um, your nervous system and your immune system are linked. Um, all of your systems are have, you can't just go in and change one thing and expect everything else to be better. It's kind of like, um, for those of you like on Facebook, there was a thread about wolves being reintroduced into Yellowstone because they got rid of all the wolves because they thought the wolves were bad. Now, when they brought the wolves back, it started to curtail the elk population and some of the deer population, but then it had all kinds of other things that went with it. Um, helped the streams, helped all kinds of other animals come back. And it actually did a whole mess of other things that they didn't even understand intended. By changing one thing, you change a lot of things because everything is built on a system. It's circular. So when you take a slice out of that circle, it changes it. Um, everything is, has a connection to it. We may not understand that, but there's a lot of connection there. 
And once you start seeing some of those pieces, you can understand how everything kind of fits together. Or at least have an explanation. Because things like what happened to Kiana, they just don't happen. Um, there are reasons for it. Um, they're not pretty reasons. I was not thrilled to learn any of this. I'm usually not thrilled to talk about it. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that it happened. Um, I talk about it now, so, and all the changes we make is so our son keeps doing well. And that is the whole point behind it. When we had the Father's Day thing come up, that was their job, is to protect. Um, that's kind of what you want to do. And it's hard to protect something that you can't see, touch, or feel. And you don't know. Today you know. Um, and hopefully we can do something about it. When you have questions, and you're going to have questions, please ask me. Um, I have my card up here with an email address. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Email me questions. If you're wondering about buying certain things, um, especially like infrared saunas, they have varying degrees of which ones are good because those have magnetic fields. Some of them are good, some of them are not good. Um, other things that are just even random questions. It's okay. I don't charge anything for questions. Ask. Um, at least you're going to get an opinion. And then I can tell you why or why not this or something else is good. Um, the other thing available, if you want to start today, um, I have some of these meters. I have some of the filters. You can start with a few, and you can start measuring. You can start today. You can start changing light bulbs. You can start making little changes. Um, you don't have to do everything at once. Start simple. I guess now I'd like to open it up for any questions. Okay, before we go there, and we'll just hang mm -hmm. up here. We'll, yeah. we'll do it together. Um, I understand it's Father's Day, and some of you may have appointments you need to get to and so forth. That's fine. From here forward, we're going to do question and answer, and once we're done with that, hands on touch or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but if you need to leave, that's fine. Just do so quietly. Um, I'm going to hit a couple of things coming out of what you talked about, if you could answer. Mm -hmm. You said you made the changes. What, what were all the changes you made in your house that you had to do to clean up, like, your daughter's room area? What, what um, my daughter's room area primarily, like, she didn't have anything plugged in. So to see her room much higher than everyone else's was kind of surprising. That has to do with how it's wired, how much wire you're actually using. Um, so what we did is we have, she has probably three or four filters in her room. And now the levels are much better. All that high area, like those dark blues, they go away. The lines that are really steep, like on the scope, they get smaller. You want smaller lines that are all spaced out. That means that the frequency is much lower from peak to peak. Um, the other, what's that? Filters. Filters are what fix that. Um, I leave, I don't switch the breakers off at night. That's the other way of getting around it. If you want to see, um, you can switch off all your breakers. All the ones that you don't need, I mean, keep on your fridge, otherwise your food's going to spoil. Keep on the freezers. Um, some of those. Um, other things I've seen people do is have like a master kill switch at night. Um, so they have one box and they have another box. They link it all the way up to their room. And then when they go to bed, they shut off all the power that they don't need. They keep on a few things and then they go to bed. That gets it down to zero. Um, other things we did was we replaced light bulbs. Light bulbs were the big one. Um, I had CFLs and all kinds of CFLs all over the house. They were cheaper, they were a good deal, they used less electricity. Um, most of them emitted big, uh, they're called high frequency voltage transients. That's kind of, if you start reading papers, that's what they're gonna be referred to. Um, I started changing all those because that's what's causing problems. The other problem areas, like our computers, we have three or four of them in the house. I make sure that there's at least one filter there. During my home entertainment system, I have two filters plugged in there because that has a big draw. There's surround sound, there is a PlayStation 4, there's a Bluetooth, and there's a big TV there. So I put two there, plug them in, and then just leave them. That's, that's the big thing. The other thing is getting rid of Wi-Fi, anything wireless. I don't have anything wireless. I still have Wi-Fi availability in my home, but it's almost always off. When I need it on, it's like a light. If I need a light on, I turn the light on. If I don't need it on, I turn it off. Most of the time, I think in the last year, I've had it on once, and that was in the last couple of days because I needed to update something. A lot of the stuff you have today just updates via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So I use it when I need to, and then if I need to have a really long update, especially like in your phone, I'll plug the phone in, and then I'll leave the house for a few hours. 
come back and the phone's all updated, turn everything off, and then that's how we go. The Wi-Fi was probably like one of the biggest things. And most of your homes, most of you think like um, hardwiring, you, some of you might have to run cables. A lot of you probably are not going to have to run cables. Look to see what you have down in your basement for the telephone line. If you have Cat5 wiring already in your home, you already have the wire for it. It's already ran for you. All you have to do is switch jacks. Um, it's not super expensive. If you don't have a landline anymore, it makes it even easier. Um, the other things is most like home audio places are going to be able to do that for you. What we do is we have our cable is through, um, it comes through a coaxial cable. And so like our internet and our TV coming through a coaxial cable. We have all that coming to one big hub. And then we have the coax runs through the whole house. So then at places I want internet, it splits off. And then I have wired internet through the whole house. The wire was already there. It was, I think that was, well, I had two speakers that I had to have wired, which took more labor. And the two speakers, so two surround sound for like your surround sound theater, because you need sound around you to really watch the good movies. Um, I had that done. I had um, installations for the, well, just the hardware, and that was maybe a thousand bucks. But if you're looking at just having like, like devices, um, it's called a mocha box. It was like 80 bucks. Okay. So it's not, some of these things you can work towards. Um, it's, it's not terribly expensive. If you don't have to run the wires, and the best thing to do is to find like a home audio um, electrician, probably be able to do the same thing if you're fairly handy. If you're good at watching YouTube videos, or can follow those pretty good. Um, you can probably do that as well. Um, it's just switching jacks. Some of it is running, popping wire. But depending on where you want it, it's not super hard. If until then, it's working on shutting off Wi-Fi, especially at night. Do they have any statistics out yet for people who use the phone a lot or they wear the in-ear thing all day long? And Chances of cancer? Chances yeah. of cancer, tumors, there, things it's, like that. It's, considerably raised, especially for the younger you are, usually the more exposure you have. And so um, I think it's hard. Oh, I've got some of the papers here, um, exact, exact numbers I can't rattle off, at least right now. But I mean, the more you're exposed, it used to be a heavy user. There was a study, like a big study they did in Europe, and a heavy user used to be a half hour a day on your phone. Um, is there anyone that does less than a half hour now on their phone? What they categorize as like a high user versus like a low user is, is drastically changed. And so even if you're texting, you're still being exposed. If you're using anything with your phone, even if your phone is off, you're still being exposed. And so the phones, I mean, the phones have evolved. I mean, they're basically like little laptops and they are constantly setting versus like the old flip phones that we used to have. They weren't as bad. That's what a lot of those studies were on. And so the amount of exposure that we're getting now is considerably higher. Yeah. And so you're also seeing higher rates. There's a lot of, some of the arguments that they come out with is that brain cancer hasn't risen. However, when you start looking and digging into things, the types of brain cancer, especially gliomas, have risen. And glioma is the deadly kind, um, fast spreading other things. If you look at some of the other things that we have, especially when you have, compare like cell tower, cell tower how many we have, versus things like autism rates, you see them do this together. Is that the only cause? Probably not. Is it helping? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, a lot of these things work in concert with each other. So when you have, it's kind of like if you're going to bake something, like you're going to bake a cake. Can you bake a cake without eggs? Chances are it's not going to taste very good. Um, or bake a cake without flour. When you start putting these things together, you end up with like a cake. And cakes taste good. I mean, you can eat it. But if you eat tons of cake, are you going to be really healthy? I mean, chances are probably not. A lot of these things we put together and we use them all, and it makes our life a little bit easier here and there. But, I mean, you pay for everything. Nothing's right, free. Yeah. Um, now, America's usually the ones who we don't really care about people's health. We just, yeah. bottom line. So, like, even the food that we have government, you know, FDI, uh, not the FDI, uh, food and drug, yes. Yeah. Um, the things they approve in this country, like you go to Europe and stuff, they're banned, they're outlawed, people mm -hmm. can't even buy it because it's bad for your health. Okay, so now some of this electrical stuff, 
do you know anything about other countries? There are lots of countries that have way different standards, and that's where the mess starts, is every country has a different standard. And so when you start looking at like the countries that have the highest, like toughest standards, that's going to be Russia. And if you look at why possibly that is, is you look at the amount of research that they poured into it. Um, for a lot of this, a lot of this deals with some of its military because they're trying to weaponize it. Um, what's a nice way to try and figure out how you wipe out an entire platoon? If you can shoot something at them, then that's the way you do it. Um, they also realize they have certain standards. The 50 comes from Kazakhstan. That's on the back of the meter. That's in any government building. You can't have a reading higher than 50. This is measured in gram stets or units. That's what they've decreed. Um, the higher the frequency, the more it affects kids a lot more. It affects adults. They have different, based on the frequencies, they have different regulations for it. Russia's stronger. Um, the other one is France, like Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi in schools. There's a, I responded to someone's link, and it has a huge link of like what people allow in schools. They don't allow, I believe it's France, doesn't allow Wi-Fi in any nursery, um, any daycare, any little kids. Um, a lot of it is based on a precautionary principle. If you don't know what it's going, don't expose them to it. They're the most at risk because their bodies are a lot smaller. They don't allow any of that. Here, it's, it's like candy. Yeah. In other schools, they only allow like an hour or two a week for Wi-Fi usage up to like fourth grade. Um, it's kind of mind-boggling. If you look at like even some of the other schools, they go outside. They do outside, outdoor activities. You're not going to find as much there. Being cramped up in a high area where you have all this going on, it's different. Their electrical system is also different, which is also a big deal because here we use a Y system. There, over there, it's a delta system. And so there is more of a closed loop. Here you have pathways, especially when you start tapping into ground, that create other problems. So you can, you can use the rules that they have were set in place for a good reason, but they kind of get exploited. Over there, especially when you start dealing with huge motors, um, VFDs that they send over to Europe, they got to send filters with them. Um, filters aren't something new. This isn't like a filter that I sell, isn't brand new. That technology is 100 plus years old. Um, these aren't new things that are happening. If you are looking at motors and some of like the energy efficient ones, they have filters built specifically for that motor that they hook up into because it causes problems on their lines. Mm -hmm. um, when everything is contained, you don't have extra outlets. So that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Here you can buy them, but they don't necessarily sell them because they're trying to be cost effective. So if you're selling something for 5,000 and the other guy's selling it for 7,000, they're gonna buy the cheaper ones. So you have to buy, it's usually like an add-on. If you call and ask, chances are they have a filter for it. Interesting. Now, the other thing that stood out to me, you said that a lot of infertility is being linked to the radio waves, this, that, and the other. And, and, and you know, you see stuff all the time, but it, you don't connect it. Right. But, uh, of course, cell phones are fairly recent. But it's interesting to me how that, you know, cell phones started getting popular in the early 90s and so forth. And then now yep. those teenagers or junior hires are now adults. Mm -hmm. And the problems of people getting, ladies getting pregnant now is through the roof compared to what it was when I was younger. Right. But it's interesting, where do they, and they're not wrapped in tinfoil, but where, where do keep they them. keep them? For males, it's going to affect them more because... How many times I've seen girls yeah. back pocket, or if they have a front pocket, they'll stick their cell right there. For men, it's front pocket, and for men, it's a bigger issue because your testicles are located outside the body. So it's closer, you're getting zapped even more. Um, most males will carry it in their front pocket, and that's blasting more and more. Yeah. And so uh, that's, that's an issue. Most of the day, and then they sleep with it. Right, or close you, to it, and yeah, then you, you have can, the towers It's in bed with them because you text them at 2 in the morning, they respond. <laughs> and it's like, are you up? Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, yeah. I wish you'd shoot something to you because I'm up. Yeah, and I, thought and I didn't I'd expect it. you to be up. And they shoot back, and it's like, you must have this in the <laughs> you know, kind of thing. We're close by. Or you're up a lot, yeah. you know. Yep. Um, let me give a little bit of our, what happened with us. We had them come to the, the house and the office yesterday, and then we'll just throw it open for questions. We'll need to usher to grab a couple mics here and just wander. But, uh, so he came to our house, and he tested some things. It was really interesting. Uh, dirty electricity, um, you, you, because I'm new to this, so you mm -hmm. jump in any place I get in the ditch. You know, we're, we're totally surrounded with copper here. 
you got electrical plug-ins all over and you've got lights, so you got copper wire. So we're in a cage of copper here. Your house is the same thing. Your your electrical wires are all, you know, copper and you're in a cage of copper. It's it's underneath you, it's around you, it's above you. Dirty electricity, the idea is if it gets out of balance or is used too much, uh, certain appliances puts a demand on those wires. You'll, does you'll it see it. You'll does see. it become like an an electromagnetic? You're you're like in a cage of it then, or um, does it emanate out to you? How does some it, how of it does will it work? emanate out? So you'll have bigger magnetic fields based on what the frequency is. Yep. And then you'll also have that frequency will cause problems for certain people. Like um, a lot of it. Like if you ever been to like a special ed room. Like, the, you'll see fluorescent lights covered sometimes. A lot of times they'll keep them off. Um, it's not the flicker rate, in my opinion. It is the current that gets driven through them, or just the frequency coming off so of it. So it's emanating off of it. Right. So yeah. as soon as, if you turn them off, it's not as big of a deal. That's yeah. what the problem is with all of those. As soon as you turn it on, that's what the blue is. All of this is, like, real time. So as soon as I turn on any of these bulbs, I mean, it pops up every time. As soon as I turn them off, it goes away. I mean, that'll happen every single time. A lot of your, your fridges that are constantly running, mm -hmm. they're constantly putting something so on So when there. draw is going through, it's, it's emanating. Okay. Right. That's, that's layman's terms. Yeah. It's, it's coming through. Like yep. your furnaces, your air conditionings, those will be, those are usually, they have a VFD in them, yep. and then they'll pulse. Anything's that's how you see running, them. whatever. Yep. This is the little meter he plugs into the wall to tell how bad the electricity is at any particular spot. Yes. It's not supposed to go above 50. If it does, then this is a capacitor, the best way to say it? Basically, it's a capacitor Basically filter. Basically, a capacitor. Yep. You plug it into the actual line. Like, for instance, he's got one plugged in on the stage right up there to, for Drop demonstration it. this morning. Yep. You just plug it into the line, and then it cleans up. It shorts out the high frequency. The high frequency. Okay. So there was parts of our house that were great. Mm -hmm. And then there was parts of our house, he ended up putting a lot, of, a lot of those in our house. There was parts in our house, this is supposed to stay 50 or less. There was parts in our house that this was up eight, 900. Until he plugged in some, some filters and then it brought it down 30, mm -hmm. 25, right in that area. The office, there was one area in the office, it was 1600. And one room. As soon as you turn on the lights. 1,600. It and it's supposed to be under 50. Above 50 can be cancer causing. And it was 1,600. Well, it's above, the research that it is, is above 1,000. So if you have readings above 1,000, the research paper that it has, then you have a 13% higher chance of cancer. getting cancer. Yeah. If it's above 2,000, it's 26. At least that's what they found in that study so that was far. published. So far, yeah. Um, if you look at 1,000, 2,000 isn't hard to find, sadly. I mean, that's not, like you think it's uncommon, mm -hmm. but it, it's not. I mean, there was, there's 2,000 here. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, Shouldn't some have said of that. Is, People won't want to come to church. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right now, there's, well, there's less of it, but it's, it's, it's easy to fix. I mean, some yeah. of it is the lighting. Fix the lighting first yeah. because that's yeah. cheaper than buying a filter. Yeah. Um, and then the reason filter. we put, uh, just, just so everybody knows, the reason we put CFLs in when we built, it was the beginning of the LED thing, yep. which according to your demonstration may not have fixed it anyway. You had um, to get the right, right LEDs. You got to get the right ones. These were, we got these for six bucks a bulb. Yep. The LEDs, the best price I could get at that point was 25 bucks a bulb. Yep. It was going to cost us like, for the, to do where we have all these in the buildings, but like $10,000 for bulbs. Yeah. And I said, now we're going to go to CFL. <laughs> uh, and that's what a lot of it is, but a lot of the LEDs now, a lot of them are dropping. They've the dropped, yeah. And so that's... So you just got to find the ones that are, are good. 